Yes, so I need to know what the shapes are. Enter the sandpaper letters. <coughs> Maybe I'm sorry, came up with this idea. Very clever idea. You need to have a font that matches your font, and you'll see instantly that mine doesn't. So, uh, apologies, it should be cursive. Why cursive? Why are we having a cursive font? It does, it looks really cool. What else? It's more control, it's natural. Yes, yeah. it's a flowing yeah. movement. Yeah. People who can do cursive can read print. People who can, can do print cannot do cursive. Okay, so it's a more difficult skill. Is that a problem for a child, to give them a more difficult skill? No. No. I'll use this, this example here. This is called the movable alphabet. This is the third thing we'll get to in a minute. Can you see how the letters are different? Like this is a P, and it really looks like a P. It doesn't look like a D or a B, it looks like a P, and that is really important. The letters are quite significantly different. Although, you'll find that the R is quite surprising. This is an S, just looks a bit different, okay? Um, up and down, yeah. This is, no, this is an R. <laughs> oh, so that's so this is an R. In the S's, it must be another one. Um, all the letters are much, much more different. Really, really important. Complicated. Yeah, look at that. It's good fun. It's a Z. So the font should match, by the way, and mine doesn't. So if I need to go through these, function of volunteering. Free period lesson, remember? What does three period lesson mean? Uh, you give Present. Information. Yeah. Present, yeah. Introduction and then the first yeah. one. Yep. Yeah. And then you interact with it and then you they share it back to you. Did anyone do three period lessons on Prac? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Did anyone not do it? Is it the most important way of learning? Do we introduce every single thing? And all we're doing is putting a, a language meta tag to an experience. That's the only form of teaching there ever is, ever, ever, ever. Here's a concept, and this is the language we associate with that concept. That's it. That's the only thing you can teach, actually. Teaching always happens, that specific three-period lesson always happens after experience. Remember, it has to be... Did I talk to you about all exceptions? Did I talk to you about that? Maybe I need to go through that. No. 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 Watch. Watch your fingers together. No. No. This is book. Book. Can you put n on your head? Can you sit on j can you put b under your t-shirt? Can you go and get b put b on the table? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Lots and lots and lots. As much as you can. What is this? No. Yeah, Hatina? Okay, fine, fine, fine. After a while I've done the whole alphabet. No problems. And you know j be a bit confused about n, I'll leave n in next time around and just make sure. Yeah? After I've got about ten of these, I've got enough to make start doing the next aspect. There are three parts to the beginning of language. We need to have the muscle movement so that we understand the mechanics of formation. Yeah, the mechanics. Then we need the sandpaper letters. What two things do the sandpaper letters match up? The sound and the shape. Sound and the shape. So it's that muscle movement and the sound. Now, where do I go to get the words to write? Them. You talk. Them. Thank you. A lot of schools have things called pink, green, and blue boxes, and I'm going to talk against, speak against those. You don't need the box to tell you what to write. 
It's not a spelling exercise. This is not about getting it right. This is about, oh, I can express myself. I can, I'm thinking of a something and it can come out. Remember, this is the way that we want information or ideas or sensations to flow. Yeah, out.